Welcome to Troubleshooting Work Sharing. My name is Harlan Brum. I'm the Global Technical Lead for Revit Architecture and Autodesk Product Support. In this class, we'll talk about how to reproduce, troubleshoot, and understand the data that's needed to help customers with work sharing related problems in the Revit products. You'll also be able to understand the best practices for work sharing and how they can benefit users. First, it's important to understand how to gather a work shared project from a customer so that you can properly reproduce and investigate the issue. It's important to collect a number of files from the customer, including the central file for the project, the local file that's having the issue, you may need to collect multiple local files if multiple users are having a problem. It's also important to gather any linked DWG or CAD files and any Revit files that may be linked in the project as well. Also, make sure to gather the work sharing log file. This is a slog file that's located in the central files backup folder. Also, it's always a good idea to collect journal files from around the time of the occurrence. These are typically located in the program files directory for the version of Revit you're working on in a folder called journals. Also, it's critical that you perform the following tasks on the customer's file to make sure that all the pathing information works correctly for you. Make sure you audit the files, purge unused elements in order to make the files lighter, and also detach the files from central this allows you to work on the files on your machine as if it's your own project and removes the pathing information that the customer may have coded into the file system. Work sharing related problems in Revit products can be tricky to reproduce. It's important to understand how to set up a work shared environment on a single machine in order to shoot these types of problems. In order to set up the work sharing environment, we need to create two user environments on a single machine in order to test. First, open one instance of Revit on the machine. Go to the options dialog box and change the username <coughs> to the first username you would like. Something like user1 typically works well. Then, start a second session of Revit and again, go to options and change the username to something like user2. So now you have two separate sessions of Revit running on the machine, each with a different username. Now you can create a new local file in each instance of Revit that's running by navigating to the central file and opening the central file with the create new local option checked in the open dialog box. Then. To make sure your safe to central is working correctly, you can use the synchronize with central command from each new local file to verify that it's saving back to the central file. Now you're ready to attempt to reproduce the customer's issue. Using this process helps to eliminate many variables that could occur. One of the key problems with work sharing issues is the disconnect between a user's machine and the network. Also, this allows you to eliminate any antivirus problems by disabling them on your machine. One thing to note about this process is that you can use more than just two sessions. If there are three or four users with this problem, you can simply launch three or four sessions, ensure that the usernames are different for each, and attempt to reproduce the problem. This eliminates these network problems that could be occurring within the work shared environment. Also, it's a good idea to check TS1427-4639 for a problem that happens when files don't save during the synchronize with central. There are a number of troubleshooting steps available. The technical solution covers file permissions, the Windows temp folder, creating a new local file, other users synchronizing with central, and file locations. Make sure the client has ruled out these common issues. A key 
key troubleshooting step to solving common problems with work sharing is to simply create a new local file from the central file and verify if the problem still exists. Let's take a look at how to proceed through this process. To create a new local file from a central file, go to the Open menu, navigate to the central file location, and ensure that the Create New Local checkbox is selected. Then click Open. This will create a new local file based on the central file. To ensure the mapping is done correctly, go to Synchronize and Modify Settings and ensure that the central file location is correct. Click OK to verify that a Save to Central works as expected. Also, it can be a good idea to delete the Revit Backup and Windows temp files in order to make sure you're working in a clean environment. Let's take a look at how to delete the Revit Backup and Windows temp files. To delete, to delete the central file backup folder, close the project and navigate to the central files backup folder location. Simply right click on the central backup folder and choose delete to delete the backup. Then reopen the central file. Once the central file is opened, you will be able to see that a newly created backup folder is available. Synchronize the central file to ensure that it saves correctly. Then proceed to open a local file on the machine and make sure that that local file also synchronizes correctly, verifying the central file location. Now let's check to make sure we can delete the Windows temporary directory as well. Navigate to the system properties and look at the variable value for the temp folder. You can then use this variable to navigate to the temp directory in Windows Explorer. This will allow you to delete any Revit related temporary files that may be causing a conflict with the system. You can verify the central file mapping with the central and local files to make sure that the local file is pointed correctly to the central file location. Start this process by opening your existing central file. Then switch to the Collaborate tab and choose Synchronize and Modify Settings. This will allow you to change the central file location if needed. You can use Windows Explorer to navigate to this location if it's changed, verify that it's correct, and click OK to save the file. Sometimes the central file itself can have a problem. One of the key steps you can use is to save a new central file by using an up-to-date copy of a local file and simply creating a new central file with that local copy. Let's take a look at how to create a new central file from a local. Let's save a new central file from an existing. We'll open the existing central file, making sure to uncheck the Create New Local checkbox. Go to Open. Then we'll go to the Save As Project and save the project with a new name. And then we'll make sure to go to Options within the Open dialog box and make sure the checkbox is selected for Make this a central file after save, clicking OK. Once the file has been saved, we'll close the central file and going to open, open the new central file, but this time with the create new local checkbox selected. This will create a new local file from our central. Then we'll make sure that a synchronized to central works correctly. Verifying the central file location is set within the project settings. There are some common technical problems 
that appear in technical solutions on Autodesk.com. Please check these three technical solutions if you're having a related problem and attempt the troubleshooting steps listed. Now, let's talk about some work sharing best practices. First, for users, there's a few things to keep in mind. Work sharing functions best with around six to eight people working on a single file. Often, it's a good idea to separate a file if you need more users working on a single part of the building. Also, when making significant changes to a project, moving major geometry, the height of a level, or making changes that affect multiple views, multiple levels within a project, it is recommended that you perform these operations when no other users are working in the file and all users have relinquished all elements they have borrowed or owned. Once the changes are saved back to the central file, all users should make a new local file of this central file in order to ensure that the changes are properly included in all the files. It's important to keep in mind some recommendations regarding the size of an individual file as well. On a 32-bit operating system, we would recommend around 160 megabyte max in the size of the file. On a 64-bit operating system, around 200 megabytes should be the max that a customer would have in a single file. You can also break apart the project into logical groups using work sets for things such as separate buildings, different levels, interior objects, exteriors, or shell. It's a good idea to look at how the project team is organized in order to decide how to break up work sets. For additional best practices, check out the Revit Model Performance Technical Note that's available on Autodesk.com. It includes many recommendations around work sharing and performance that you can use to get the most out of the work sharing environment. As a final note, for subscription customers, it's highly recommended to download and utilize the Work Sharing Monitor utility. This utility can help users manage a work share project, provide notifications when Save to Central is complete, or when users request borrowed elements. It's important to make sure that all the users on a project have the Work Sharing Monitor open. Make sure that the users also have the same Windows permission level and that they're using the same build of the work sharing monitor in order to get the most use out of the tool. In this class, we talked about how to reproduce, troubleshoot, and understand the data that is needed to collect from a customer with a work shared project or problems in order to solve those issues in a Revit product. We also took a look at the best practices for work sharing and how they can benefit users. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot.